Okay. So uh, our topic is going to be quantity of heat, specific heat capacity, and heat capacity. Specific heat capacity and heat capacity are not the same physical quantities. You have to be careful about it. One of them, as you see over here, it's specific. It's specific, uh, specific. So that means it is uh, different than the heat capacity. We're going to learn about them. Uh, but let's begin with the units of energy. As you know, you remember the unit of energy is joule. And we're going to have another unit here, which is going to be going to be calorie. So one calorie is 4.2 joule. Okay, one calorie is equal to 4.2 joule energy. Uh, so what is meant by the term of specific heat capacity? Yeah, again, specific heat capacity refer a specific quantity. Uh, so in order to de define this, uh, we have to know three things. The first one, we have to know that uh, the substance being heated, uh, the first thing that specific heat capacity depends on is going to be substance being heated. It can be anything, okay? The second one, it's going to be the mass of the substance. So the greater the mass of the substance, the more heat energy will be required to rise. Uh, its temperature. So this is about the mass. And the third one is going to be the temperature rise required. What does this mean? It means like for a given mass uh, of a particular substance, a large temperature increase will require a larger amount of heat, heat energy than a small increase in temperature. So in order to uh, raise the temperature more, you need, you need more heat energy. Okay. It means this. So what does, uh, after these three physical like uh, definitions, let's define the specific capacity. So specific capacity, we are going to use uh, small c, letter c, uh, to represent specific capacity. Uh, the heat energy required to rise what, the temperature of one kilogram uh, of a given substance by one Kelvin, okay? It's going to be one kilogram by a cal one Kelvin, so uh, one, one Kelvin temperature. We are going to say this is uh, specific heat capacity. So to, in order to find the specific heat capacity, we are going to use this formula. Uh, here, Q represent heat energy, M represent mass, and delta T represent change in uh, temperature. So here, when you crisscross it, uh, to find the heat energy, we are going to use this formula. Q equal MC delta T. M again represent uh, uh, mass, C represent specific heat capacity, and delta T represent change in temperature. Okay, so a specific heat capacity has a unit of joule kilogram per joule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, this is the SI unit of specific heat capacity, joule kilogram, joule per kilogram Kelvin. This is the SI unit of specific heat capacity, All right? So let's continue. So, how can we find the specific heat capacity of a substance? Again, we just uh, said, uh, like we just gave the formula. Uh, the second way to find the heat specific heat capacity, we are going to do this. Heat energy lost by hotter body equal to heat energy gained by colder body. We are going to use this equation. Heat energy lost by a hotter body is going to be equal to heat energy gained by a colder body. So this is going to give us the change in specific heat capacity. Okay. So let's continue. Electrical heating, uh, we are going to use this method. This is the first method that we are going to use to find the specific heat capacity. So this method can be used to find a specific capacity of a solid or liquid, okay? For a solid or liquid, we are going to use electrical heating. If you know, the, uh, we cannot apply this uh, method to a gas, okay? It should be solid or liquid, two of them, not gas. So if you know the power of rating of the heater, uh, then we are going to uh, switch on the heater and we are going to determine the specific capacity of the object. For example, here, uh, 100 watt electrical heater running for five minutes warmed a 0.5 kilogram block. So the start temperature of the aluminum block is 20 Celsius and its final temperature is 85 Celsius. So first of all, uh, we are going to find the energy. To find the energy, we need, here we have power, here we have time. When you multiply power by time, you are going to find energy. But the thing here, you have to convert uh, minutes into seconds, okay? So that means, uh, we are going to use, multiply 100 watt times 5 minutes times 60 seconds. You know that 1 minute means 60 seconds. So that means 5 minutes mean 5 minutes is going to be 300 seconds. So when you multiply this, you are going to get the energy, which is which we needed, is going to be 30,000 joule. Okay, so the second step, we have to find a change in, uh, uh, we are going to find a, a specific heat capacity. To find a specific, a specific heat capacity, what we need? We need uh, energy, which we found it just. We need temperature, it's over here, and we need change in uh, temperature. We need mass over here, and we need change in temperature. So what is the change in temperature, first of all? Uh, we are gonna subtract 85 minus 
20 Celsius. This is going to be a change in temperature, which is, which is going to be 65 Celsius. And the mass is given you already here. So when we do this, uh, we're going to find our specific heat capacity as 900, 300, uh, 923 joule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay. So here, there is one thing uh, that you need to know. When you uh, find the unit of normally temperature Celsius, you can't just write as it is as Kelvin, okay? You don't need to convert. Like when you convert it, remember you have to add 273 degrees. But here, since uh, it's, we are talking about specific heat capacity, you don't need to convert directly Celsius to Kelvin. You, you can just write 65 Celsius as 65 Kelvin for specific heat capacity, okay? This is how we are gonna find a specific heat capacity for a solid or a liquid, All right? So uh, now let's move on. Just a second. So electrical heating can be also used to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid. That was for the solid part. So now for the liquid. So for example, here again, uh, we have electrical heater power of 200 watt. Watt. It caused the water to increase the temperature from 25 Celsius to 74 Celsius after running for five minutes. So mass of water, 200 kilogram. Mass of aluminum uh, cal uh, calorimeter and steel is 400 gram. Uh, specific capacity of aluminum, 910 joule per kilogram Kelvin. So heat energy supplied, what, what, what are we gonna do? We're gonna find the heat energy plus heat energy received by the uh, water, by the heater, okay? And by the aluminum as well. We're going to add them to find the specific capacity. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's find the heat supply by heater. To find that, for uh, we need the energy. To find the energy, what the, what the energy is giving us, the, the power is giving us 200 watt. Again, you have to convert five minutes into seconds. When you do that, you're going to find the energy around 60,000 joule. The second step, you had, uh, we have to find the heat energy received by calorimeter and steer. To do that, we're going to use this formula, MC delta, Q, delta T. Our delta T is, uh, again, 49 Kelvin, like it, it was 25 Celsius to uh, 74 uh, Kel Celsius, the change. So when you stop directly, you're gonna find 49 Kelvin. Uh, the, the mass is given you 0 0.4 and the uh, specific capacity of calorimeter is 910 Joule kilogram Kelvin. When you do that, you're gonna find the uh, heat energy received by calorimeter as 17,836 Joule. Third step, we are gonna find the heat energy received by water. Again, to, to do that, we are going to use this formula. Heat energy received uh, by heater, equal to heat energy received by uh, calorimeter plus heat energy received by water. So to find heat energy by, uh, received by water, we're gonna subtract QH minus QC, okay? When we do that, we're gonna find 42,164 joule uh, heat energy received by water. So then to find its specific heat capacity of water, now we know the energy here, uh, we know the mass, and we know the change in temperature. So it's easy to find the specific heat capacity, okay? So uh, the water, the energy coming from water is 42,164 joule over 0.4 times 49 Celsius. When you do that, you're gonna find the specific heat capacity of water as 4,302 joule per uh, kilogram Kelvin, okay? You can check the specific capacity of water, it's around 4,200 joule per kilogram Kelvin, okay? You can check it out. So method of mixture, this is another method to find the specific capacity of a solid or liquid. So uh, this time we are going to use the water, like water, the, like the boiling point water is 100 Celsius. So uh, it takes at least four minutes, uh, five minutes to reach this uh, temperature, okay? So we can use this uh, one uh, to measure the specific capacity of a solid or liquid, okay? Let's continue. So what is this capacity of a body? We will learn about now specific heat capacity. Now, heat capacity. Heat capacity is totally different than the specific heat capacity. Don't confuse them. So heat capacity means the energy required to raise the temperature of a body by one Kelvin, okay? Specific heat capacity was, uh, we, for one kilogram, one Kelvin, we need it. But here, for a whole body, we need to increase by one Kelvin, okay? For a, a whole body. That's why this is called heat capacity, not specific heat capacity. So to find heat capacity, we are gonna use energy over change in time, okay? Energy over change in time will give us uh, the heat capacity. So there is an example over here. So the experimental data shows us that the steel bolt lost 
4410 joule and its temperature fell by 75 Kelvin, or to increase its temperature by 75 Kelvin, 4400 joule of heat energy would be required. So what to find heat, heat energy, again, heat capacity, we know the heat energy over here, which is 4410 over 75, as you see over here, we are gonna find uh, heat and heat capacity as 58.8 joule per Kelvin. So the assignment of heat uh, capacity is going to be joule per Kelvin. For its specific heat capacity, it was joule per kilogram Kelvin, okay? They are totally different than each other. So we can apply this to find specific heat capacity like this. So it's going to be heat capacity of body over mass of body. That is going to give us specific heat capacity. This is going to be another way to find specific heat capacity of a material, okay? So for the steel bolt, let's say it has like 0 0.125 kilogram uh, mass. So we know the heat capacity of the body. We just find 58.8 uh, joule per Kelvin. So when we divide them, we are going to find specific capacity of the bolt as 4, 470 joule per kilogram Kelvin. Let's do another question. Uh, so a solid block requires 3000 joule of heat energy to increase its temperature by 60 Kelvin. That means it is zero Kelvin to 60 Kelvin. So change is going to be 60 Kelvin. Calculate the block's heat capacity and use this value to calculate its specific capacity if the block has a mass of 50 gram. So first of all, let's calculate the heat capacity. To find heat capacity again, we're going to divide heat energy over here, 3000 over change in temperature, which is 60 Kelvin. When we do that, we are going to get 50 joule per Kelvin. Second of all, to find a specific heat capacity, what are we going to do? We know that heat capacity, which is 50 joule per Kelvin, and mass of body is 50 gram. Uh, you have to convert the, uh, you have to convert, you have to convert the mass into gram into kilogram. 50 gram means like 0 0.05. When you divide 50 gram to 1,000, you're going to get 0 0.05 kilogram. So when you divide it, you are going to get the specific capacity of the block as 1,000 joule per kilogram Kelvin, okay? This is another way to find the specific capacity of the material. So change of states. Uh, let me explain this on a, let me explain this on a heating curve. When you heat the object, for example, at the beginning, the object, let's say it's solid. When you start heating the object, object will change the state, solid to liquid, uh, as you see on the graph at point B. And then when you, uh, when you keep heating the object, the object, the liquid will change to the gas, as you see over here. It is going to change, and it, when it reaches to the gas state, it's going to be like this. And at the end, when you start, uh, like, uh, when you start, when you keep doing, keep heating the object, the gas state uh, is going to continue, and the water or the liquid over there is going to evaporate, okay? So this is how, when you heat uh, an object, how uh, the change in state going to happen. The second one, what about when you're cooling, uh, when you, when you're cooling down an object, what's gonna happen? So this time, when you cool down the object, from gas, it's going to start cooling down and it's going to end up with solid, okay? So this is the boiling point of water. Let's say it's, let's say it's a water, this is the boiling point of water. This is gonna be the melting point water, the place when solid change to the liquid. This is going to be a melting point, and here it's going to be a freezing point of water, which is going to be zero Celsius. Okay. So melt, melting means like when a substance has changed from a solid to liquid. Remember that is called melting. Okay. So now let's define the specific Latin heat. This is another uh, uh, physical quantity that you need to know. So the specific Latin heat of a substance is defined as the quantity of heat energy required to change one kilogram of substance from one state to another, okay? One state to another. It can be from liquid to solid or like from solid to, let's say, liquid or liquid, liquid to gas, okay? Uh, but here, the temperature must be constant. Don't forget this. Uh, for specific Latin, the temperature must be constant when it changes state. So specific Latin has the unit of joule per kilogram. Uh, so we use term of specific again. That means it's just uh, applicable for one kilogram of a substance, okay? That's why it's called specific uh, Latin heat. So uh, there is an equation, uh, energy over mass is going to give us specific Latin of heat, okay? Specific Latin of heat. So we are going to use, uh, if you want to find the energy by using specific Latin of heat, we're going to use a formula like this. 
mass time specific latinum of heat is going to be equal to energy required uh, to change state of a of a object okay so uh, there is an example well, let's see let's go to an example okay there is an example over here so calculate the heat energy required to increase the temperature of 50 gram of water from 25 celsius to 125 celsius so first of all uh, the specific heat capacity of water is 4200 joule per kilogram kelvin uh, the specific heat capacity of steam is 2080 joule per kilogram kelvin and specific latin heat of evaporation of water is 2,500,000 joule per kilogram okay these are given you they are going to be given you in the exam even when you face this kind of question you are going to get this one okay so first of all we have to find the heat energy required to heat 50 gram of water from 25 celsius 200 celsius so since we are looking for heat energy we are going to use the q, q equal mc delta t uh, formula okay the change in temperature again it is uh, from one uh, first of all it is from where to where uh, from 25 celsius 200 celsius before changing its state remember when it reaches 100 celsius it's going to change its state that's why we have to uh, different uh, we have to separate it from 25 celsius to 100 celsius first and then from 100 celsius to 125 celsius so to find this we know that the mass of the um, mass of the water is 0 0.05 kilogram times c which is 4200 joule per kilogram kelvin is giving you and times uh, 75 kelvin the change in uh, from 25 celsius to or 100 celsius okay so you're going to find the energy 15,750 joule. The second one, after boiling, when the temperature reaches at 100 Celsius, what's going to happen for 50 gram water? This time we are going to use a specific heat latent over here, okay? Because at 100 Celsius, uh, the since state changes, we are going to use specific heat latent, okay? So the mass again, 0 0.05 times 2,500,000. Uh, we're going to find the, our uh, heat energy required to boil 50 gram of water at 125,050 joule. The third step, this time we are going to find after boiling, which is between 100 Celsius to 125 Celsius. Okay. When you do that, again, the change in temperature is going to be 25, uh, 25 times, again, the specific capacity of water, which is 2000, uh, specific capacity of steam. Why? Because after boiling, the water is going to turn into steam. So we have to take the specific capacity of the steam over that after 100 Celsius. Time 0 0.5, that is the temp, uh, that is the mass of the water. And then we are going to find the Q3 as the 2,600 joule. So to find the total energy, we are going to add all of this. Whatever we find over here, we are, going to, we are just going to add all of them. 15,750 plus 125,050 joule plus 2,600 joule. And then we're gonna find uh, the total energy need re or required to increase the temperature of 50 gram water at 143,400 joule. Uh, when you divide these two thousand, you're gonna get 143,000.4 kilojoule heat energy. Okay. 